Hello? Hi? Testing? <laughs> I'm live. Cool. Um, welcome to a stream of Jet Li's Rise to Honor. A fantastic video game. For the first time, I'm going to share links on socials about what I'm doing. <laughs> Which... Uh, I don't do often. In fact, I've never done before with streams. So bear with me for a second. I'm gonna post this here. And I'm gonna post this here. Okay, cool. <laughs> and now I've gotta open this up to see, I'm so inexperienced at streaming, help. All right, we're in, here it is. This is Jet Li's Rise to Honor. Let me know if my sound is working and everything. Um, but this is a this is a hell of a video game. I first played this uh, in 2020 for a video. There's a microphone in front of my face. For a video. Um, and I can't really remember what I said about it in my video. I think I said I liked it, but in the past few years, since playing this game for the first time a few years ago, uh, I've really, really adored it more and more and more as time has gone on um, because it's really good it's uh, it's basically a I'd describe it as uncharted before uncharted happened it, it's like do I want to overwrite save data? Nah, we'll go fresh um, yeah this game is kind of uncharted in 2004 on PS2 starring Jet Li it as like a kung fu, karate, Hong Kong action movie, martial arts movie kind of thing. Um, and it's really, really well paced is kind of its biggest thing. The story is actually good, <laughs> which I didn't expect at all from a game with like a celebrity's name in the title. Hello, Squid. How are you? Um, and it's just... A super polished because this is a Sony published game. This is a first party. They were showing it off at E3. They were showing it off at shows, um, huh? and it was a system. Well, it was meant to be a system seller. I think it kind of flopped, <laughs> but the production values in this game for a 2004 game are really, really high. But you wouldn't think it because it's a game with a celebrity's name in the title, right? Um, and you can kind of tell. That this is this is a little more high production than you might expect for something called Jet Li's Rise to Honor. Doing fine. Glad I caught this on my sidebar. I'm glad to. Um, but yeah, it's it's a super scripted uh, beat 'em up game, I suppose you'd call it, with very simple platforming, context sensitive jump button pressing, some high quality animations. Yeah, it was a sick front flip. <laughs> um, and something that this game did that was sort of its uh, biggest USP, its biggest selling point. Game Master 15, ah, yo, this game looks interesting. I was literally playing this game five minutes ago, no way. Um, yeah, this game's really, really good. I really like it a lot. And it's, it's, it's USP, it's big selling point in marketing uh, was that you can't control the camera, it's a camera that's sort of fixed, but the right stick it attacks in the direction you flick it in. So, right now, if you could see, I'm sort of just flicking this stick to attack this guy. Um, play in Cantonese, it is better. Yeah, I've played through it once in both languages, I just figured for the stream English uh, was more palatable to my Western audience. Um, God damn, this game is so nostalgic for me. I rented it and it would freeze after the bar club level before buying it. Played it non-stop with my brother. Yeah, dude, it's so good. I'm just getting beat up while reading comments. Oh, it wants me to block. Okay. Uh, love this game. It was a super interesting way to play with the analog sticks. Yeah, it's... It's really good. It's a really fantastic little thing. Um, and really ahead of its time. I think... You, when this game came out, it probably didn't seem like video games were trending in this direction as much as they kind of did by the time 
Uh, the Cantonese version does have English subs. I'll go back into the main menu and put it on soon. The Cantonese is better. It's funny, when I made a video about this game a few years ago, um, I played some of the Cantonese dialogue as well as the English dialogue. And because I don't sort of speak Cantonese, I assumed that the Cantonese dialogue was sort of more natural and better, because it is, because it's a game set in Hong Kong. Um, but I got comments from can native Cantonese speakers that were saying that the Cantonese was also really, really shit. <laughs> right? Like, the voice acting was really, really bad in Cantonese. That I just didn't notice because I don't speak Cantonese. Which I thought was funny. A bit lost what in translation. Oh. Hi, Jar Jar Blue. But like, hi Matthias, hello everyone, hope you're all well. This is Jet Li's Rise to Honor, if you've just clicked on it. On, uh, a sort of cinematic beat-em-up game from 2004 that uh, was published by Sony, and they put a lot of um, marketing into it, they put a lot of money into it. They tried to sell it as a big PS2 game, big Sony first party thing, and it sort of plays like Uncharted mixed with the old-fashioned beat-em-up. I'm not used to this candid talk with your voice. Everything in your channel always sounds so structured and planned. It is. <laughs> um, it's, yeah, it's, it's funny. I, I almost feel like a fraud when I'm reading a script in a video because it's kind of acting, right? Um, it's, it's sounding natural while saying something that is, while, while being way too, uh, Ironically, I can't think of the word, <laughs> but just while, while being like way too smart, right? Like, I liked when Jet Li said it's jet in time and jet it all over the other guys. So did I. Uh, imagine if this was the first game with Arkham Asylum controls. Yeah. One day I'll pick it up. I like collecting ex exclusive games, so it's on the list. Yeah, it's it's a cheaper game. Um. It works real. This is actually emulated. I'm hardware upscaling it a bit, and it works really well. Hold block and flick the stick in their direction to grab them and throw them off ledges when you need ledges. It's fantastic. Some people sound completely different on stream compared to vids. Do I sound completely different? I don't think I sound too different. I just talk slower and say um a bit more. Remember the cheat code for this where you can turn into a chicken? Yeah! So, I didn't know about that when I made my video. Um, and I got a million comments saying I can't believe you didn't mention the cheat code where you turn into a chicken. <laughs> so, uh, we can test that out later if I remember. This is the first level where you're getting taught the controls by slapping the right stick in the direction of your enemies. Uh, there was another game called Death by Degrees, uh, which was a Tekken spin-off that also did this. Lick the right stick towards your enemy's combat. Um... And it's not as good as this game, but it's a bit more of like a Metroidvania. You're sort of going back and forth between like a haunted cruise ship. While pressing the R1 and L1 buttons. Ah, oh, this is the countering. Not really, sounds one-to-one. -one. Yeah, okay. Well, that's good. I'm glad I sound natural. I'm trying not to like... It's weird with video making because you're kind of playing... It feels a bit like I'm playing a character. So I'm trying to come across genuine, but it's like, I don't know. When you're reading a script, there's always a strange uh, disconnect between what you're doing and what you're making, I suppose. Oh yeah, the jump thing. So, this attack, right? You can go to the wall and you do this jump up. The game wants me to counter, so he's dead, dodging everything. But those wall attacks are basically the only way you can beat this game. <laughs> Because towards the end of it, it gets insanely hard. I heard you fought Jet Li back in the day. <laughs> yeah, I did. I like Jet Li. When I made this movie... Well, sorry. When I made the video on this game that I made... Uh, hold down the L1 button. Let's try that. When I made the video about this, um, it was the middle of the pandemic, the 2020 pandemic, I think. Um, 
and uh, I was in lockdown. So this is a this was a lockdown video, and it was depressing. Um, but what I did while researching this video was basically watch a bunch of Jet Li movies. So I kind of associate this game naturally with all those Jet Li movies I watched that kept me sane during lockdown. So now, like, I'm a big fan of Jet Li, and I kind of forced myself to be through this video. <laughs> or at least I'm a big fan of his movies. I think his best movie is called Fearless. It came out in 2006. Uh, so if you want... <clears throat> if you want a good Jet Li movie, check out Fearless. Your videos feel genuine in the sense that we know you're making opinionated videos. It's still all coming from thoughts and observations. Yeah. I'm glad. No different than presenting a speech, in my opinion. Yeah, but... I I guess I'd say that presenting a speech feels weird and unnatural to me, but that's just, like, how it is. It's no big deal. It's just... There's a disconnect between presenting anything and just natural conversation. Man, it's a shame my internet speed sucks right now. I'm gonna have to see the video once finished. Eh, sorry about that. My internet speed isn't great either. I'm on Australian Wi-Fi. My router's two rooms away. Should I play Driver 3? I will play Driver 3 on a stream in this, uh, on this channel soon. It's annoying you can't emulate Driver 3 because you just can't. It doesn't emulate well. So you have to install the PC version, and the PC version's insane because, uh, you use the mouse to aim to shoot, right? Like, while aiming on foot, you use the mouse, um... But the mouse buttons are completely unbound in the PC port. So left click and right click don't do anything on Driver 3 on PC. Uh, but the numpad 5 is shoot. So too bad if you don't have a numpad. <laughs> so you need you can go into the settings and like rebind it to mouse 1, which is fine. But the fact that it launched with mouse input to aim and numpad 5 to shoot is insane. <laughs> Wi-Fi was invented in Australia. It was actually co-invented with um, the in in the university I went to. Uh, I saw Istanbul mod for Driver Three. Looks insane. The entire city is swapped out. I haven't seen that. I'm glad that modding in Driver Three is becoming all more of a thing, though. It makes me happy. Still waiting on the chapter thirteen review of. Final Fantasy 15. I know I can write an entire essay on that chapter. Is that the chapter where you... Is that the hallway chapter with the ring? <laughs> Is that that one? At least someone has a strange fondness for Driver 3. Yeah, a lot of people do. Um, Driver 3 sold massively. And uh, there's a community called Driver Madness that's been away, been around for years uh, and they have a discord server and a modding scene and there's a fan game called driver syndicate coming out it's all very amazing the hallway yeah so final fantasy 15 has this hallway um <laughs> level like final fantasy 15 is one of my favorite games of all time uh has this infamous level that people find really boring where you're just sort of going between these really dark <laughs> depressing hallways for what feels like an eternity um, I don't completely hate the scene though, I think it kind of works contextually as like a low point for the characters. Some combats in this game feel a little weird to me, they are some, there are some enemies that seems they are on Ultra Instinct or something, they counter innovate everything, yeah. The combat isn't great. Um, and it definitely could be better, but it doesn't ruin the game for me I suppose I'd say. The, the, the appeal of this game to me is very much the presentation and the style. Uh, I remember watching my cousin play that game on his Xbox when I was a kid. Not enough games set in Miami or Las Vegas. I agree. And I like that the Driver series has been to Miami and Las Vegas twice. Uh, Scarface The World Is Yours is in Miami, which is fun. Um, not sure if you have a PS5, but are you playing Top 1 FF16? I am. I have a PS5 and I'm going to buy it day one. Um, probably my most looked forward to game this year. Um, but like, Final Fantasy XV is literally my favourite Final Fantasy game. 
which is a controversial opinion. Ooh, cool grab I did. Um, and it feels like they're trying to stray away from the ideas they had in Final Fantasy XV because no one liked it, <laughs> which is fair enough. But as the only Final Fantasy XV fan, I'm a little uh, skeptical, I suppose. Because Just because I love that game so much. This is Vegas, that cancelled game. Yeah, that was a thing in like 2006 or 7. I remember that. Yeah, I can't, can't remember what it was. Was it like a GTA clone? Dunno. Godfather 2 is in Miami, that's right. Miami Vice on PSP is in Miami, naturally. <laughs> You ever played Mark of Cree? I think I did, but I don't have a lot to say about it um, because I can't remember it very well. I should replay it. I know people like it. And I think it's a Sony game, right? I think you'll end up liking FF16 based on what I know specifically if you played like DMC. Man, I gotta pay attention to this shit. Hang on. <laughs> Finding that balance between reading comments and playing the game I'm playing. This is my third stream ever, right? I'm still figuring this out. I'm, I've made a million YouTube videos, but I've streamed three times. Can be played. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll try out Mark of Free. I think I have it on PS2. Did it have combat like this? Was it like right stick combat? Uh, I think you'll end up liking FF16 based on what I know of it specifically. If you played and liked DMC5, a lot of the combat influences from that game. Okay. Um, I've played DMC5 briefly. It seemed good. It felt a bit like inside baseball though, because I'm not a big DMC guy. And playing that game, it, it constantly felt like it was referencing the other DMC games, and I just didn't know what it was talking about. <laughs> I'm out of the loop on DMC. Like, I've played most of them, but I haven't finished any of them, I think. You would set up targets with the right stick and assign buttons to them so your combos would get more simple the more targets you had to fight. Yeah, that's an interesting idea. So you'd like lock on to multiple people and they would each have face buttons and then press those buttons to attack those people. Like like when you're aiming a ball in like a Madden, is that the kind of thing? I'm glad I'm playing this I'm glad I'm playing this game towards the start because actually I'm gonna die anyway. Um. Damn it. There we go. Because this game's actually really hard, especially towards the end. And I'm about to die. Rip. DMC was good, but the environment design and pacing was dull. Yeah. There we go. That's the good stuff. Uh, yeah, it felt... I didn't feel like the environment design was dull as much as it overstayed its welcome. You sort of felt like you were in the same area for way too long in DMC5. Unless you mean, like, actual, like, structural level design then, I think I probably agree. It kind of just feels like you're going between combat zones. Still waiting on your Spider-Man 2 PS2 slash PC comparison and review, and the clickbait potential now is incredible. <laughs> Yeah, that PC Spider-Man 2 port is so bad. It's really funny. I think if I was to do a Spider-Man game, though, I'd want to do... Um, I want to do the... Oh my god, did some slow-mo. I'd want to do the Andrew Garfield ones. Because no one talks about them. <laughs> I don't know if they're interesting. I've never actually played them. But the fact that Andrew Garfield had two Spider-Man games and... They never come up ever interests me. It makes me want to know what they are. So if anyone's actually played those, played those Andrew Garfield ones, let me know. Let's see if I can counter this guy. There we go. There's the stuff. Look at that.
There we are. From what I've heard, they're okay. I like watching your channel because you've always had reviews of forgotten games that are really worth playing. That's how I discovered this game, for example. Thank you. I appreciate that. This door's locked. What do you reckon I do here? <laughs> Look at me go. Game design. Fighting, zipping, stealth, all from the Insomniac games. Yeah, fair enough. From what I remember, Amazing Spider-Man 1's game was fine. Amazing Spider-Man 2's was pretty rough. Yeah, if I covered them, I'd just do both in one video. See this chicken model here? I think that's the chicken you turn into with, this, with the uh, cheat code. <laughs> and we can pick it up and start whacking people with it, I'm pretty sure. We'll do some of this rage mode thing. Sorry for those effects glitching everywhere. I'm hardware emulating this. Yes, whack him with a chicken. Something I don't like about this game. Um, <laughs> he just said don't hit me, I'm just here to cook. Okay, the combat seems to have stopped working. That's annoying. There we go. Um, the weapons, the weapons that you pick up in this game are actually uh, less useful than if you just don't pick them up. Like, it's better not to pick up weapons in this game some, a lot of the time, which is a big flaw, I would say. <laughs> like... Ah, now we get to see some of the gunplay, because this is... a movie that has shooting and fighting. To target, slap the right enemy stick towards an enemy. To fire guns, press the R2 button. So I aim with the right stick, like this. And it locks on when I see one, and then I hold down R2. It's a little less inventive than the hand-to-hand -hand combat. But you can do Max Payne slow-mo dives in it. See if I can remember how to. Yeah, there we are. Look at that. <laughs> they were all the rage in the early 2000s. We also had a cover system. Which I don't remember how to use. While holding the L2 button, slap the right analog stick in the direction of a targetable object. There we are. It's interesting how up and down the Spider-Man games were... How up and down the Spider-Man games were post-Spider-Man 2. It seemed like Treyarch and Activision figured it out at some point, and it all just went out the window. There was another game like that. The weapons actually did less damage than the hand-to-hand combat. Yeah. Makes me wish John Woo came out with another game that wasn't a mobile title. Yeah, it's funny. When I covered, um... Uh, what was that game? The 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 Rock Spy Hunter. That that game was meant to tie in a movie with a movie, and at one point that movie had John Woo signed on, which fascinates me. I would have loved to seen what you know John Woo did with The Rock and a hundred million dollars. But yeah, I'd like to see him make another game. Um, Stranglehold was was really good. I guess like this game, Stranglehold Stranglehold's gameplay is pretty flawed but everything else is cool, but I certainly prefer this game to Stranglehold. I think Stranglehold sort of has pacing issues where this game doesn't. Uh, this game's just a blast from start to finish. Just a good old-fashioned beat-em-up with a good story and good cutscenes and good set pieces. What more do you want? Damn it. This is like the first boss in the game. And I'm gonna lose because I'm streaming and haven't been paying any attention. There we are. Get him. See how much health they're on and see how much health I'm on. Maybe after this I'll see if I can do mission select. <laughs> Yes. Maybe I can do this. God damn it. Fuck. <laughs> no good. Yeah. Thoughts on the supposed John Woo Killer remake? Oh, interesting. I didn't know that was a thing. Hi, Chad. Welcome. 
Good to see you here. Man, I forgot how difficult games used to be. Naturally, no healing, tough enemies. Maybe I should go back and play more older PS2. This game is pretty difficult even for a PS2 game. I'm going to see if there are... Uh... Yeah, there's my original save file from when I first... Okay. Chapter selection. Oh no, they are locked. Rip. Okay, maybe I don't have a save file. Does that mean I have to start from the top? Probably does. <laughs> it does. Of course this happens. <laughs> Did you know that you can use Qantas points to book accommodation? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I know who that is. I recently bought a PS Vita. I've been looking at buying a PS Vita. I want to do a video about Mod Nation races. Um... Which was Sony's big crack at a kart racer with customization features that came out after Little Big Planet. Uh, and the Vita had a Mod Nation Races game. That, um. That I feel like I should play if I want to do a video on Mod Nation Races. It doesn't emulate well because Vita emulation isn't very good. Um. Which is a shame. But Vitas are like 200 bucks minimum here, which is annoying. It was supposed to have Lupita Nyongo, I believe, but, I, but now that's not the case. Apparently it's a Peacock exclusive, okay. Let's see if I can grab this weapon. No, nah, not yet. Why, why did you buy a Vita? Are you going to hack it and make it an emulation machine? Because I feel like that's almost the only valid reason to buy one now. Are there any games that are actually stuck on Vita that are worth playing? Like Uncharted Golden Abyss, is that worth playing? Alright, what am I doing? Carefully time slap. Yeah, there we are. I'm going to get up to that boss battle again and die. <laughs> Maybe that's where we can call it a day on the stream. But mine for the PS exclusives, to be honest. What are the what are the exclusives on on Vita? What's what's still to play on there? Cuz they took off Gravity Rush. I kind of with Tear Away. That was a game called Tear Away, I think I want to play. Killzone Mercenary Resistance Burning Skies Silent Hill Book of Memories. Okay. Yeah, I do want to play Golden Abyss. If you've joined us recently, this is Jet Li's Rise to Honor. Which is a Sony published big budget 2004 PS2 game that they put all this advertising into and brought in Jet Li as the big name for the game. Uh, and then it wasn't a financial success, although they never admitted that. <laughs> the only reason you can kind of tell it wasn't a financial success is because they made it... Uh, they made it, they put it on deep discount really, really quickly. Um, but it's surprising that it's such a high-budget sort of video game, considering it has a celebrity's name as part of the title, right? But it's basically a, a beat-em-up that is paced and sort of mixes gameplay elements together in a cinematic way like Uncharted did a few years later. Uh, which makes it feel a lot more ahead of its time. Um, than you might have expected. And I really, really like it. The combat's flawed. You actually attack enemies by slapping the right stick towards them like this. Um, and the combat is... Flawed because enemies just seem a bit unfair. Sometimes, like, you'll start an attack and they'll just dodge it, like, arbitrarily. Unit 13, squad-based shooter like PS3 era style with cover mechanics. I think it's okay. Okay, yeah, I think I've heard of that. I played Killzone Shadow Fall, like, two weeks ago, maybe? Um... 
and the presentation in that game is really quite something. There, there's it, it, it has a sense. It's, its art direction is really, really good. It always looks spectacular. You can almost take any screenshot from Killzone Shadowfall, uh, and it'll look good. But the game doesn't play very well. I think that the intro segment where like you're a kid in Killzone Shadowfall, I think, is actually really well executed. Um, obviously, it's just like a Call of Duty style linear tutorial level. Um, but it makes you invested, and then after that, the game never really delivers on how good that intro was. Oop, that didn't work. Look at me go, countering. Question, have you thought about going to play the more obscure Yakuza titles? Dead Souls is the one that comes to mind. Um, yeah, I have. I bought a copy of Dead Souls. Uh, with the explicit reason of I want to make a video about this. Um, but, just haven't got around to it, as it goes. Um, I played through Like a Dragon Ishin earlier this year, and I thought it was amazing. I thought it was like... Like, it's probably my game of the year this year. I loved it. I, I like it more than most of the actual Yakuza games. Um... I think the setting was really interesting. And the characters were good, and it was all very sort of tightly put together in a way that I liked. I thought the intro was cool, but the whole slideshow thing kind of made me shrug, to be honest. Yeah, I get that. Um, have you ever played the original Killzone trilogy, Micro Me? Can't remember if you've ever covered them in a video. I haven't covered them in a video. Uh, I played one and two, I never played three. I think 2 had a, 2 felt like a tech demo to me. I think the input lag that 2 had was so over the top that I just couldn't uh, couldn't enjoy it. And I guess I'd say the same about 1. 1, I don't think, is a very good game <laughs> either. Th those games just don't grab me at all and don't feel good to play. Um, but I hear Killzone 3 is, like, the best one in terms of, like, playability. Uh, and it feels... Feels to me like Killzone 3 was a bit of a swan song for the PS3, you know, like a late release that is super technically impressive and high production and stuff. You've always sounded like you were smiling while talking in every video. It's nice to finally see you. I often am. <laughs> I don't know. There's a... I think it's just the way I talk. And yeah, it's nice to see you in the comments here. 3, they made it a fair amount smoother. Yeah, I heard. Um, I should play 3. I think I have it. I think I might have played it um, when I got... I think I played the demo for it. Uh, back during the 3D TV craze, Killzone 3 was one of the 3D games, and I wanted to test it out. So I think I downloaded the demo to see the 3D. One was okay, I remember thinking two was graphically great at the time, but the characters were stereotypes. I'll never forget the ham sandwich bit. Don't know what that is. Honestly, I still think Mercenary is the best one. The series has a lot of potential, but didn't live up to it very well. I played, um... I played Liberation a bit. Killzone Liberation, which was like this weird isometric action game. I uh, didn't really like it. <laughs> but I remember it. Don't know why. Not many people would. Um, but yeah, Killzone 2 very much felt like a tech demo to me, and it's a great tech demo, but um, I was surprised... I was surprised when Killzone 2 sort of reappeared in YouTube essays as like a, you know, a classic. Not to say that everyone else is wrong and I'm right, but I don't think it's a great game. Um, even though it got really good reviews when it came out. All this FPS talk is reminding me of Homefront. Homefront's a game I actually reviewed in a now delisted video. Um, Homefront's weird as. <laughs> it's so edgy. It's it's it feels like a game that was born out of the um, the No Russian mission from Modern Warfare 2. It feels to me like someone's played that no Russian mission and was like, gamers love controversial FPS games, so we're gonna make our own. Um, and it's completely like tactless about it. <laughs> Not to say that Modern Warfare 2 had any tact. 
but it's just it's just a funny thing. And something I really like about Homefront is the guns sound like cannons. They like deep and bassy. They they they're really really punchy. The game isn't great, but the way the guns shoot is kind of awesome. I feel bad that I'm showing you so much of the same gameplay over and over again. <laughs> it is what it is. I made mistakes. I thought I had a save file that had all the chapters unlocked, but I didn't. And it's annoying because these levels aren't the most, like, colourful or graphically interesting. There's one level later on where you're fighting a dude in a pool. Um in like a shallow like baby pool and it has these water physics going on that are so over designed like <laughs> so obviously someone working on this game spent like a m at least a month just making these water physics alone for this one fight and i love it i stand home front revolution forever yeah i need to play more of it Yeah, the entire game's premise never really hooked me like I think they wanted it to. Maybe because it was too close to reality in a sense, I detached myself from it. Um, I think the problem with Homefront was it was too... Like... I don't want to say it was like too committed to its own idea. Just the writing wasn't as interesting as it thought it was, if that makes sense. So when it went all like... Ooh, emotional. Imagine if this happened. Imagine if North Korea invaded. It it didn't it didn't come off in any in any way other than laughable. <laughs> it just sort of felt like this is stupid. And like it could have gone like a more B movie route about it, like um like Freedom Fighters did. And ironically Freedom Fighters feels like it has a lot more heart. Um and intrigue and, and you know an emotional core to it that Homefront just failed to achieve. But it's a five hour game where you shoot guns that sound like cannons, so you know, it's not the worst game in the world. I think something I really like about Jet Li... No, no, keep spamming me with questions, it's fine. Something I really like about Jet Li Rise to Honor is... Um... is it has a really strong adherence to uh, its location. It has a strong sense of place, if I'm being literary. Um, and it also commits fully to just being, I guess, realistic. Set in a real world, grounded location. Like, you're just kind of going through grimy streets, beating up dudes. There's no superpowers. There's no magic, there's no mystique, or mystical elements, or supernatural elements, or sci-fi. And that sounds like a weird thing to compliment. Um, I love that they have the horse thing on the screens up there. That sounds like a weird thing to compliment, but I feel like a lot of video games, especially lately, uh, have been set in fantastical settings. Um, like I watched that PlayStation Direct thing they did and it was almost all sci-fi games and if it wasn't sci-fi it was fantasy and I don't know I just like a game that's set in a normal place it's it's more evocative to me I feel like I could I can relate to these areas because they're realistic human areas and I wish more games were like this or at least trended back in this direction like games were back then all right, how do you feel about the Dead Rising franchise? Something you'd ever review? Dead Rising. Ah, uh, the zombie, ah uh, yeah, co-op zombie RPG thing. Is that Dead Rising? Is that, and Dead Rising 2 just came out? I'm bad with names. Um, I played Dead Rising on release. Um, and I didn't love it. I remember thinking it was really clunky and weird. But it had some good ideas, and it was committing to this sort of first-person hand-to-hand combat in a way that you didn't really see in um, AAA games much. Like, back then it was like Xenoclash was doing it. 
Breakdown did it on the Xbox. Um, but it was pretty uncommon. It was an interesting idea, but I don't, I don't know. It kind of felt like it took a lot from Left 4 Dead as well, and I don't really like Left 4 Dead. Uh, any sneak peek for your next video? My next video is about um, Fast and Furious Showdown. And I know that you mentioned earlier that I cover uh, lesser known games that are actually pretty good, but Fast and Furious Showdown is just sort of bad. <laughs> but I still want to cover it because I'm on a big Fast and Furious kick lately because the new movie came out and I've covered all of the other... Um, I've covered all of the other Fast and Furious, all the other major Fast and Furious games. So for the sake of completion, I want to talk about it. And I think there's some uh, things worth saying about it. Would you ever cover Deadly Premonition? Uh, hmm. Yeah, I probably would. I'm hitting people with a chicken again. Deadly Premonition's awesome. I really like it. The only, the only reason I'm a little hesitant to cover it is because people cover it a lot. <laughs> I guess I like being... I like covering things that people don't talk about much. Um, it's happened again. The chicken stopped working. Um, but Deadly Premonition is a very, very cool and interesting game and tries a lot of really great things. Um, and I really like that it does, like, day-to-day -day life sim stuff. <laughs> Like, you kind of go out and there's a timer and you drive around town and optimize your day. There's a game called Mazerna Falls on PS1 that does a similar thing that I want to do a video on. Can I do this? What am I jumping? I think in this game, when enemies are down, you can't attack them. I could be wrong. Maybe you can grab them or something. But that's kind of awkward. You should check out its prequel, Mazona Falls. Yeah, yeah. Mazona Falls, I think, is is a little more worth talking about, if only because less people talk about it. <laughs> I enjoyed Deadly Premonition, played it on Switch, tried the prequel, but I'm sort of trying to figure out what I'm doing. So yeah, the prequel... Is it really the prequel? Are they related? Are they... are they... are they in the same universe or something? Did I just happen upon talking about games that are in the same... Anyway. Yeah, Mazona Falls isn't a very good game, but it just does a lot of interesting things. Which I suppose is like every video I talk about. I think it's a prequel. Okay. Just inspired. I think it's just inspired. Oh, right. <laughs> I was meant to shoot the barrel here. There's another game that came out recently called... The Good Life, um, which does some similar things. And then there's Shenmue as well, which does some. And a game called, or a series called Way of the Samurai, also does some like day-to-day -day optimization stuff that I think is really interesting because it does a lot of branching parts with its storyline. Um, yeah, Way of the Samurai is really, really interesting. I should cover Way of the Samurai. <laughs> I'm realizing this right now. I haven't... Uh, I played The Good Life for like five minutes and I thought it was not good, but I didn't give it a chance at all, so... What's wrong with The Good Life? I'm on the boss battle I died on last time. Um, but yeah, Way of the Samurai is basically like... It's, you complete the campaign... Oh my god, I got hit during a cutscene. Um, Wave of the Samurai is cool. It's basically like a five hour long campaign, but there's heaps of branching parts. Uh, there was another game called Kamiwaza, which did some interesting things, some similar things. Um, that was a Japan exclusive PS2 game. Um, that got ported a couple of years ago in English. Um, but I haven't played it in English. Yeah, look at those reflections. Look at this game. Look at the lighting. I'm gonna die again. <laughs> Is 
track counter better. Oh, here we go. Something's happening. Ah, oh, we're good. Nice, I beat it. Happy days. Every mini vid basically, Mac and me, the game is surprisingly ambitious as it recreates the universe one to one and have a breathing mechanic, but heavily let down as it deletes system 32 every time you die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. Every video I make is like, this game's amazing, but actually it's really, really shit. <laughs> so, you should play it, but also be warned. If you die during the boss, do you restart the entire level? No, so what I did was, I thought that I had a save file that had all the other chapters unlocked, so I quit. Um, and I didn't, so I had to restart the entire level. The other weird detective sort of DP game is Flower, Sun and Rain on DS. It's by Grasshopper. Yeah, I think that game was on PS2 as well. Um, I've played that. That game is very stylish. Um, something I love about Jet Li Rise to Honor is you have unlimited ammo and you never reload. <laughs> That's how movies should be. That's how... Martial arts movies, Hong Kong action cinema. It's basically a Chow Yun Fat movie. Just keep shooting, keep shooting and diving. There we are, that's the good stuff. Have you played a game on PS2 called Raw Danger? It's called Disaster Report in Japan. Uh, I haven't, but I know about it. I've been told to play it a lot. I get, I get it confused with a game on Wii. It's also something about a disaster. Can't remember what it's called. They reload when the camera isn't on them. Yeah, that's right. And they just ha they just have these really tiny clips that have like sixty bullets in them. Just little like pellets. <laughs> when you think of PS2, do you still think of like old grainy CRT or HD like 360 and later? I think of CRTs. Um, maybe because I have mine plugged into a CRT. I played a lot of Time Crisis, uh, growing up. Like, a lot of Time Crisis. Like, Time Crisis 2 might be my most played PS2 game. Um, I think I get betrayed here. Oh, the game's in Cantonese now. Multi-direction combos. So, I've been mindlessly playing this game by just smacking the stick over and over again in the direction I want to hit, but... It, sh it is actually a little more considered than that. You are meant to sort of time your next stick slap after your last one to do a combo properly. There we are. That's the good stuff. Time Crisis 2 in one credit stream when? <laughs> Someday. The problem with that is I have to figure out how to plug in a component cable into a light gun, into a CRT, into a capture card, into OBS, into YouTube. I suppose I can just left click on enemies in an emulator. But where's the fun in that? The other day I was looking at Time Crisis Arcade Machines. Time Crisis 2 is the one I played most as well. Time Crisis 2 is like by far, oh, not by far. Time Crisis 2 is the best Time Crisis game. It's for PS2, but it's an arcade game, so there's a cabinet. Um, Time Crisis 2 is basically Time Crisis 1 with two players, which is all the series ever really needed to be. <laughs> Um, and in Time Crisis 3 what they did was introduce all these weapons you could switch between, so you had like a shotgun, and a grenade launcher, and a machine gun, and uh, it was nowhere near as good because kind of the, you kind of were just spraying and praying the whole time and just relying on the weapons to beat levels. Whereas Time Crisis 1 is about precision, it's about the art of gunsmanship, of shooting light guns at a screen. <laughs> Time Crisis 2 music slash OST is killer. Um, 
The storyline's just hilarious. Evil companies trying to launch a satellite and they steal the girl. You have to save her damsel in distress stuff. Absolutely really insane. El Mustachio, thank you. <laughs> I realize, like, I enjoy this mustache because it's really stupid looking. Is there a Dave and Buster's equivalent in Australia? Basically, in the US, only new arcade games you'll ever see is in Dave and Buster's. Um, no, we don't have Dave and Buster's, which I think is a restaurant that serves food and has arcade machines. Um, but we have something called Time Zone uh, and Coco Amusement, at least here in Sydney, which almost only has new arcade machines. It's actually really hard to find places that have old arcade machines nowadays. They used to be in movie cinemas a lot in Australia, but they don't seem to be anymore. It's actually pretty hard to find a Time Crisis 2 cabinet anywhere, um, compared to even five to ten years ago. Think Chuck E. Cheese for grown-ups? <laughs> That's a good mental image. Yeah, Intercity Galaxy World. There's, yeah, there's a lot of places. Um, this sequence I always found a bit terrible because you can't see where you're going. <laughs> but it's cinematic, you know? It's a cinematic game. And it is really cool. This this feels very anachronistic. This feels like a game sort of from like 2009, but it's on the PS2 and it came out in 2004. Just in terms of gameplay. Taxi 2 is a great concept for a game, but the game falls flat of any fun at all. I'm not familiar with Taxi 2. I think I know of it. Isn't it based on a movie? Or is that Taxi 3? <laughs> Intensity. Yeah, that's right. The red logo. I used to like going to... I used to like, whenever I saw a Time Crisis 2 machine, I used to try and set a high score on it. That was my nerdy activity. <laughs> so if I knew a Time Crisis 2 arcade was at the, my local movie cinema, I would go there and set the score. Assert my dominance on the machine. Where's the Catherine review? I... yeah... <laughs> I haven't played Catherine. I have it installed. I actually bought it maybe two months ago. Been meaning to play it. Looks up my alley in terms of quirkiness. I've been playing a lot of, um... Humanity lately. Which sort of reminds me of Catherine. Sort of a cube-based puzzle game. Although its story is a lot more minimal. I think that qualifies in your obscure and weird games rating. Yeah, I think so. I'm gonna wrap this stream up soon. Maybe when I die next. Thank you for joining me, everyone. It's been a pleasure to play one of my favorite PS2 games. Uncharted on PS2 starring Jet Li. With less shooting and more punching because it's Jet Li. Lollipop Chainsaw is another one. Yeah, I like Lollipop Chainsaw. Lollipop Chainsaw. I think it's a good game. Uh, Euro Thug did a good video on it recently. I think it was her. Which is worth watching. It's an indication to stream more in the free time. Yeah, I'm... I very much enjoy this. It's good. I, I'm... So it's Thursday morning for me at the moment. Um... And I think I want to do this every Thursday morning. I couldn't last week because I was... away from home. But in general, the plan is stream a random game that I like every Thursday. Next week, probably Driver 3. Tune in for that. Um... If I can get the PC port to behave. Which is funny, it's such a bad port, but it, it, it runs 
perfectly fine at high frame rates. Like, none of the functions seem to be tied to the frame rate. So I bought a new monitor recently and I played Driver 3 at 144 hertz on it. <laughs> and I was like... That's kind of amazing. Considering the port is so bad and there's so much pop in. The controls are whack. Have you looked into Chronicles of Riddick? Uh, yeah, I did a video on Escape from Butcher Bay. I think it's fantastic. I think it's one of the best games of 2004, actually. I have a lot of video game opinions that I think too hard about. But yeah, Riddick, Riddick is a really good game. Especially the first, like, four hours of that game. is just... I wouldn't change a thing. The way it sets up its story and atmosphere and everything is amazing. In what way is Driver 3 PC bad? Uh, the controls are really bad, but the pop-in's really bad um, as well. I think Vortex Story will be able to help you out more. Um, it, it performs okay, and it has some extra missions. I think uh, some of the visual stuff is worse as well. Like, I think it's a downgrade on the Xbox version, which had some bump mapping and... Whoop. <laughs> what happened there? I actually need to hold the stick to the side to go along that rope. I can't hold it up or down because you'll just hop off the rope. There's a definitive edition with RTX and a few graphical fixes. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the modding community for Driver 3 is really picking up steam. Which is fascinating, considering... It almost feels like Driver 3 is is getting more popular. Maybe that's my fault. <laughs> Alright, there I go. I died. But yeah, I, I, I get messages from people who are, like, young that are getting into Driver 3, which I think is funny. But, um... That was Jet Li's Rise to Honor. Basically Uncharted on the PS2 with Jet Li. Special features? We'll end this stream by watching this bonus video. Wait, what's this? <laughs> or not? There we go. The worst PC port of a PS2 game I've seen is True Crime New York. It runs twice the speed full- yeah, yeah, it's really bad. Like, I guess you could say Spider-Man 2 is a bad PC port of a PS2 game, but it- it basically is a different game. Um, uh, Darkened Sky? Was that on PS2? Darkened Sky's PC port. Um, the cutscenes just don't work unless you have a very specific processor. Which is a problem. <laughs> because that game's pretty pretty story heavy motion capture was a big deal in 2004 GameCube and PC only okay yeah I had to play it on GameCube because the PC version didn't even work on my Windows XP PC that Cory Yen guy he um I think he's a big martial artist, or he was a big martial artist coordinator in Hollywood, and I think he directed this game. Fifteen years ago. A lot of marketing for this uh, game. We don't have a game. It's like it can capture. You know, I think he tells a story here where like Sony gave him a ring and said, "Do you want to make a game?" And he was like, "Yeah," <laughs> which doesn't sound like it happened that way at all. Computer remembers. So when you're old, 60 years old, I can put my face on my movement. I still can fight. That's my dream. Look how excited uh, he is. You love to see it. <laughs> I like the PS2 banner positioning. Like the box art? Oh, you mean at the back there? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> What a game. 
The animations in this game are really fluid, but it does feel like the game prioritizes the animations a little bit over snappy gameplay. It kind of has that Prince of Persia 1 problem, where it's like almost all about the animation. But it's not, it's not too bad. I still love this game, Jet Li Rise to Honor. It's the one where you attack with the right analog stick. It is. Um, so there's just a lot of animations in the game because Jet Li needs to like twist and turn in the different ways that you tap the analog stick in. New Prince of Persia, New Prince of Persia, never. Look at this camera angle. Look at this 2004ness. <laughs> Explaining mocap. Yeah, Prince of Persia is a weird series. I don't. It was weird that they went back to the Sands of Time trilogy with the Forgotten Sands after they rebooted the game in 2008. I feel like the series kind of lost its identity entirely when they did that. Um, I'd be really interested to see how a new Prince of Persia game is received if they make another one. And I think the first, I think Sands of Time and Warrior Within are, um, are fantastic. I think that, was it called The Two Thrones, the third one? I think The Two Thrones was pretty bad. And yeah, The Forgotten Sands was a tie-in to the Jake Gyllenhaal movie, which made it seem even more just cheap and shoddy, even though it was kind of a full game. Um, but yeah, Sands of Time, Warrior Within, I think are fantastic, even though Warrior Within is the most edgy game ever made. And then the third one, which tried to, like, rein in the edginess, sort of felt like... Either fully commit or don't commit. Don't do this half effort at making the game half edgy. <laughs> um, but yeah, especially Sands of Time. I think everyone should play Prince of Persia Sands of Time. I think it's one of those sort of quintessential... Is that the word? Must play games. 2008 is my second favorite beautiful game. Yeah, it's a good looking game. I didn't get super into it, but I was pretty disappointed when they didn't continue the 2008 aesthetic. This video is longer than I remember. It's funny, when I'm making videos, um, I think a lot about these behind the scenes videos and I try and like read into everything they're saying because they're just marketing but there is sort of like these bits and pieces you can extract out of them ever thought of looking into the Evil Dead games on PS2? yeah I have, I bought them um, I haven't played them though as far as I know one of them or they are like kind of twin stick shooters almost aren't they am i wrong about that like sort of like um vampire the masquerade games no not vampire the masquerade hunted record hunted reckoning is that what they were called does anyone know what i'm talking about i gotta google this hunted reckoning xbox hunter the reckoning why is that the game I think of when I think of like twin stick shooters? But yeah, for some reason I think I associate the Evil Dead games with Hunter the Reckoning, which I'm not sure anyone's even played. Just associating one game with an even more obscure game. The first Evil Dead game is a straight up Resident Evil style fixed camera angles. Okay. The second Evil Dead game is a straight third person shooter. Not sure about the third one. Heard it was the best. Okay. Maybe I'm just thinking of the first one. I have Hunter on Xbox, but I haven't played it yet. Hunter was cool because it was co-op. Um, it was... I don't think it was anything special, but it, it, it kind of felt like... You know how the Lord of the Rings games were cool? Because you just kind of had this floating camera that followed the two of you through an entire game. Hunter was similar. Yeah, I might do a video on Hunter someday. I think there was two games. Um... There was Hunter the Reckoning, and then... Uh, maybe there was three games? That was... Hang on, let me look this up. The, the original was on Xbox, and then there was one called Hunter the Reckoning Wayward, which was on PS2, I think? And then there might have been a third one? 
Yeah, the third one's called Hunter the Reckoning Redeemer. I, I knew there were two. I didn't know there were three. Maybe I should do a bit. I don't know. Are they interesting enough? They're kind of just like you walk through levels top down co-op and you sort of use the right stick to aim and shoot at things. And like the Lord of the Rings, you upgrade your character's abilities as you go through it. Um, and that just makes it like a simple, fun co-op game. And yeah, they really didn't make it easy to follow the series. I think I always thought that Wayward was kind of like a rehash of the original, but I'm not sure. We're learning so much about how Corey and Zeb work. They're learning about how we work. It's been a really, really dynamic process. Strange their exclusivity when they actually have a storyline across all three games. Yeah, that is weird. That's a that's an odd decision. Hunter is more hack and slash than pure twin stick shooter. You might be right. You probably are right. You sound like you remember this series a lot better than I do. I seem to remember it being more I've ever been around of a shooter, but are all three of them more hack and slash, or is, is one of them more of a shooter, or am I just, and just am I just wrong? Maybe I just remember them as like Lord of the Rings clones. Wiki says the second was the port of the first game, port of the first game with new story and fixes. Whatever that means. Yeah, what does that mean? <laughs> you port the first game and change the story? Yeah, it always felt to me like uh, Wayward was the PS2 version of the original, but don't know. Another glorious stream. Thank you, Kelvin. It's about to end, though, with this behind-the-scenes video that is going a lot longer than I expected it to. Wikipedia is not the end-all be-all of information. It's very true. Yeah, apologies. When he said Hunter, I was thinking of the wrong game. I was thinking of Twin Calibur, a budget PS2 only Euro. I know that game. I have that game. Yeah, that's a weird game. It's like, um... Yeah, it's just a strange twin stick shooter with a lot of weird controls and mechanics. What's it called? Twin Calibur. Let's look that up. I don't know why it made me think of this, but there's this PS2 game by Konami um, that's a light gun game. I think it's called like Police, uh, Police Konami 911. Yeah, Police 911 um, is an arcade game, a light gun shooter, right? And these games are really funny because you could plug in a webcam, but not not the PS2's iToy because it wasn't compatible with the iToy because I think it came out before the PS2 iToy, but you could plug in a webcam and you'd play this Konami light gun game like you would Time Crisis, but the webcam would try and detect when you were ducking, <laughs> right? Um, so you kind of had to, you kind of had to like literally aim the gun like at the screen and then duck out of the way and then come back and aim, which is how the arcade cabinet worked. But on PS2, it was a lot more shoddy and it didn't work very well. Uh, and there's a list out there online of the webcams that work with Police 911 on PS2. Um, 911, 911 on PS2. Uh, and it's... It's pretty obscure. You kind of, if, if you want to play Police 911 these days on PS2, you have to like scowl eBay for 20 year old web USB webcams that plug into your PS2. The specific short list that people online have tested to work um, and plug that in to play the game. Maybe I should do a video on it. I'm going to do a video on Police 911 sometime. Um, maybe it's called Police 24 seven. I don't know. It seems to be called both. It seems to be called both Police Nine One One and Police Twenty Four Seven. But whatever that game is, a very very funny and goofy attempt at a light gun game. Um. But yeah, the Italian job games were a thing. They were a thing. The PS One game is a lot more interesting than the PS Two game. It's worth doing. There's a game on PS One called World Scariest Police Chases that I want to do as well. That's like a open world driving game, budget driving game. It's kind of funky 
Um, but yeah, I think we wrap up the stream now. I hope you enjoyed Jet Li's Rise to Honor, starring Jet Li, featuring Jet Li. Um, will you ever cover more Java phone games down the road? Yeah, I'm thinking of doing a game, a video on a game called Nowhere soon. Uh, Squid, have a good one. Vortex story, bye. Jeff, see you later. Hell yeah, subbed. Thanks, everyone. I enjoyed this a lot. Uh, and I'll do this again in about a week's time. Probably for Driver 3. Maybe for something else. I'll decide later. Um, yeah, take care of yourselves. 